The Honorable Member from Time Valley and the Opposition Whip. The report from the Premier's Council for Recovery and Growth was a long time coming. But it's not so much what's in the report that is of concern, but what isn't. From its very inception, the stated purpose of this council, as, state, as set out by the Premier, failed to acknowledge the health and well-being of workers as a primary goal. With the core membership chosen by the Premier overwhelmingly dominated by business leaders, the experiences of workers remain in the shadows. There is a focus in the report on which industries have been hardest hit by COVID, but there is very little on which groups of workers have been hardest hit, women, young and racialized workers. It is implied that workers need more, quote, ambition, rather than the need to provide meaningful opportunities to learn and grow. There is no mention of the need to ensure our workplaces are fair and safe, and that all workers are able to earn a decent living for themselves and their families. Growth of our working age population numbers is critical. Immigration will be central to meeting our labour market needs as well as keeping our young island workers here on PEI. However, we can't talk about population growth without also talking about housing. We can't talk about population growth without also ensuring all new and established islanders can earn a living that will allow them to meet their basic needs in thriving communities. Key issues highlighted in both the public and MLA consultations for workers, such as health care, housing, and a true basic income guarantee receive only a passing mention at best in the recommendations. Focusing solely on the needs of business rather than on the well-being of workers not only fails Islanders, but is also a lost opportunity to set PEI apart to recruit and retain skilled workers that will finally begin to address our labour shortages. Simply put, if government is not serious about improving working and living conditions for Islanders, it cannot be serious about the future of our economy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.